What is going on, Lunatic Fringe? There's a whole lot to, to cover right now. The 800 million USTC burn is active. I reached out to a friend that might be able to help us with a lot, and we'll see what happens. But before we get into this, if you would be so kind, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell to be notified of future content. And remember, if you go to Spreadshirt right now, we are the True Believers gear uh, with Luna Classic logos is available. So it's in the description somewhere. Go check it out. If you like the if you like this stuff, get yourself some. Make sure that you wear it proudly. You are the true believers. Now, I'm going to do a refresh a little bit of yesterday. We talked about the 800 million USTC burn, how the uh, how they address the missteps. Uh, we talked about how Ozone Protocol, now called Risk Harbor, was involved and that they were the ones that said, hey, we lost the keys. Uh, so we're, you know, we, we can't return the 800 million. Now, what we have learned is that Risk Harbor uh, have agreed to blacklist the wallet. Now, if that's the case, then the question would be how to burn it instead, because at the end of this, at the end of everything that we're doing right here, we have an $800 million debt to Risk Harbor, formerly called Ozone Protocol, because we cannot peg back to the dollar without that. Okay, so uh, the, the question would be, how do we get that out of the ecosystem? So now um, the idea here is to create a contract with a sole message send to transfer all holdings to Angzu. I can then migrate the multi-sig contract via governance to that code ID. Uh, this approach eliminates the need for validators to install any code, minimizing legal responsibility associated with the update. So what they're looking for is looking for a path forward in order to burn the tokens. And once we get some clarity on that, then that's going to reduce the, plot, uh, the supply by about 10% in one fell swoop, which is going to add... 10% of value to each and every one of the tokens. Currently trading at $0.04. Cents, that would, of course, make them $0.4, .4 cents at that point. A 10% reduction would, would increase the, the remaining supply by about 10% as well. About 9 actually. But um, that's a pretty cool thing. Also, I did a thing, guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, I, I, I guess I'm telling most of you right now. Uh, I reached out to Brian Armstrong for Coinbase to talk about the listing. And I'm asking him or any one of his representatives to come on to this channel and talk to us about what it would take, what it would look like to get um, to, to, to get Luna Classic listed again on Coinbase. And then maybe we'll have a clear path forward so that we know exactly what we need. So now let's check out price action. As you guys can see right here, we've got a lot of waning price uh, momentum. Uh, I checked my Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are very, very wide right now on the larger time frames. Uh, when you break it down to the one hour time frame, uh, you see that it's starting to get very, very tight right here. So there's a big move getting ready to happen, but this is the broader crypto market. You're seeing it kind of everywhere. When you get this tightening right here, like you saw right here, we saw this big move to the downside. Uh, then you saw an upside move, some momentum get had. Then you saw that crazy little crash that we had. Now everything's real tight again. Now, why is it tight? Well, the FOMC meeting in the United States has already happened day one. Day two is today. And then about uh, 12.30 p.m., my time, 1.30, something like that. We're going to get uh, Jerome Powell's going to step up to the mic, hitting mom's spaghetti and, you know, whatever crazy raps he comes up with. Uh, you know, those, you know how those kids are. And he's going to tell us what's going on for the next at least 30 days uh, in terms of Fed rates. Now, the Fed rates do apply that if the if they do a change in the Fed rates, then that's going to be probably disastrous for uh, most markets because nobody's wanting to see a move upwards right now. So uh, not looking good if that were the case. Now, if that's not the case and we still continue the, the Fed rate pause, then the rally continues. Uh, but what everybody's looking for now is they're looking for a little movement towards a downward momentum and a reduction of the rates. And we're not there yet, but you're going to start hearing that FOMO feeling about that. So bear in mind that most likely we'll get a good result and the market will decline at that point because they're like, well, it didn't go down. And then 24 hours later on Thursday, tomorrow, that's when I think that we'll see the rally. Now, uh, if you look at the... Um, uh, if you look at the, the the moving averages, then you can see that you know we've broken through the 200, not looking great. Uh, the 50, we're right up below the 50 and the 20. We we're going to have to have a breakout and start to play our way up uh, the charts again. Otherwise, sinking momentum. Now, sinking momentum is okay at this point because the rest of the broader market is in a wait and see mode. Uh, however. If you come over to high IQ, then you can see right now that we've got a short position that's been entered uh, on the charts 
around eight o'clock yesterday, and it's still playing out with downside momentum. Now, if you see these arrows, these arrows are just telling you that there's a trend and a change in the general trend direction, but not until uh, you see a full reversal do you see an entry point. And look at these; these entry points have been uh, on these scalps. Uh, they haven't been. Uh, they haven't been. They haven't been awesome. Um, they, they've they've pumped a little bit, but not a whole lot. This is a downward trend, uh, a bearish momentum, and you know we'll we'll see what happens here. But uh, you should pay attention to to, to what's going on. Uh, for the next little while, uh, stay alert because there could be a radical drop at any time. Uh, this market is starting to buy back a little bit, a little bit. But remember, we were at 44500 just a couple of days ago. We're down about 8% from there uh, in the overall Bitcoin market. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, no no new government's proposals, by the way, other than the one to burn the $800 million, uh, by Risk Harbor that, that's being that's sitting there. Again, I'm not I'm not a fan of this uh, proposal still going to maintain that I'm not. And, you know, we'll leave it at that for right now. Volume continues to decline. Expected, expected uh, the, the volume on USTC kicking back up a notch. Not great, but a, but a little bit. And, and that's always a great thing. That just means trading volume continues to move. Now, trading volume when it goes up tends to mean price action goes up a little bit. So this was a dip. Uh, this was a buy signal for some people. Uh, 3.7 cents. Turns out that's going to be a, uh, a spot of contention on the charts and that's what people are looking uh, for that little buy uh, signal. And that buy signal came in right there at your, uh, as you hit the golden pocket of this chart, uh, you can see now that, you know, that's why the golden pocket is important because as soon as we hit that, that's where you DCA, put in it a little bit and, and you go long and you see what happens in that position. Uh, could it come back down a little bit more? Yes, it could. Could you take your profit along the way? You absolutely could, but, um, you know, that's what you're looking for, uh, when, when you're wanting to make a play. So, uh, somebody came in here, saw 3.7 said, you know what, this is an opportunity to pump back up to about 4.6 cents and they're going in on it. And guess what's playing out perfectly. So, um, manager, if, if you're doing any kind of risk trading futures, anything like that, uh, then I, I would definitely be checking this out. And by the way, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you check out the content later today, because we are going to start burning with Bitcoin, uh, and fire token. Uh, brought to you by Levi, and uh, you know maybe that's going to end up being a very very cool thing. So, guys, in summary, wait for the fo wait for the FOMC. If you look, if you're risk if you're risk heavy and you and you want to take on some risk, go for it. Do some futures trading with Luna Classic USTC. Uh, links in the description down below. MEXE is my preferred trading platform. If you want to, if not, then just take a long position and just kind of hodl for a little while. Uh, if you are hodling, then then of course play your fib retracement lines and and hope for the best you know sometimes it'll play out sometimes it won't but if you hold long enough trust me you're going to be just fine this is luna classic this is ustc the repeg is going to eventually happen and we are going to absolutely moon so uh this is not financial advice my name is Bleeves. i'm always right thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you again very very soon